Romans 12 and 3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Jesus, we thank you for your word tonight. We've been eating been handed a measure of faith. I pray, God, that each and every one of us has been diligent stewards of that faith, and we've added to it. We've increased. We've improved. We've become more powerful, more faithful to you because we've planted it, watered it, nurtured it, and taken care of it. And despite all the things of this world that we think are important, that we've added to our faith. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. Paul goes on and says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. I think we like to know that when we've done something, we've increased the value or improved on the situation. Many times we're taught about stewardship, we're taught about the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit and the things, but let me tell you something else. God has given each one of us a measure, and I hope that each and every one of us obeys Scripture and we've added to our faith. I hope after living for God for a year, your faith has increased. And if you live for God for two years, it's increased. And According as you've been in the house of God, the presence of the Lord, you have increased and not buried it somewhere. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience. If you have not changed, you've missed a large portion of Scripture. And to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness. Are you hearing me? And to brotherly kindness, charity, or love. For if these things be in you and abound, everybody say abound. They're not just there someplace that you got to get a broom and go find them, but they're kind of bubbling over. What bubbles over in your life? They make you that you shall neither be barren, come up, faith, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It seems that we're always concerned with getting more, especially in America. <laughs> if you're not using what you already have, why would God give you more of it? Faith is doing something you've never done. Wait a second. If you haven't done anything new for God, you've stopped. And if you stop long enough, you stagnate. And pretty soon you'll dry up. And faith is going somewhere you've never gone before. Faith is taking a step when there seems to be no step. Faith is giving when you don't have it to give. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How many? Well, I would knock on the door if I knew they wanted me to. You're not walking by faith. Well, I'd go and do this and teach a Bible study if I knew they wanted to hear it. I'd talk to them about it. Or I'd go do that. How, how many times do we, 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 we say the opposite of what we say we believe? The, the, you know what, we got a good devil, and I, and I hope tonight I'm able to help us add a pillar into our houses because, you know, you can turn and say, well, this part of my house stood, but that fell in. I was watching a friend post a picture of a building that was on fire, and he's watching it live, and he's streaming it live, and we're watching it, and the guys were running to one side and coming out with stuff out of the building, and they decided that the building that was on fire 
that if they could just stop it from going any further. And so they, they rushed in and they didn't have the fire, the fire trucks didn't get there. So they grabbed the water truck and they turned that spigot with a pressure and they're shooting it sideways and they're trying to, they're doing everything they can to say, we need to even be, be concerned about an area of our life that maybe is falling in, falling short. Maybe we've neglected it. Listen, I want you to listen to what he says here. Evidence is not seen, not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Hey, elders, you still need to be teaching by how you live. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We know, and I've said this at pretty much every juncture of this series, every believer is building a house, a spiritual house, not, not one made of wood or brick and mortar. Instead, it's the depiction of our life and relationship with God. Are you hearing me? You, you, though we can't sit here and look at each other's gingerbread houses in the middle of a, you know, a, 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 as we've watched them being built. Oh, look at yours, and you got this. And you. Sometimes we just have to know them by their fruits, by what they're really doing. We look at each other, and we're watching. It's that house is our spiritual life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Understand that the storms of life are going to batter that house. Everybody, trust me, trust me. You have a pain pan. We all do. We can compare pain pans about, well, you went through this. and I was, But let me tell you something. It's not about the, the pain pan. It's about the faith. Everybody's been dealt a measure of faith. It'll be tested. Everyone's will be tested by the storms that beat against it. Every uh, Corinthians tells us, 1 Corinthians 3, 13, for every man's work shall be made, every person's shall be made manifest. What, what, what you're building, the day will declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work what sort it is. And we know clearly according to Matthew 7 that Every life faces storms and winds and rains and waves. No one is exempt. And those two builders built. And some lives stand and some lives fall. Now I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the tangible things. I'm talking about the spiritual thing. I'm talking about if you have all sorts of success and authority and attain, uh, achievement and attainment in the world. That's only as good as the world goes. But when you walk into the house of God, when you're a president, what have you attained there? That's your spiritual house. You may be able to come in here and write a, you know, a fifty thousand dollar check, but can you come in here and pray in the Holy Ghost? Can can you you can go and teach someone about the successes you've had in the world? But can you come in here and lead someone to Christ? Can you teach? Those are the things that weigh heavy on eternity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we realize the only difference in, in, in a scripture is found in whose lives are built on doing the word of God by what they've heard. The one that obeys the word of God stands no matter the storm. The one who hears but doesn't do the word falls because of the storm. Did you get that? It, it's subtle, but it but it's very real. We we find out, you find out. And listen, if you realize, man, your house is, was knocked down spiritually and it's not there, you can build it again. You don't have to sit there in a pile of rubble of a lack of faith and doubt and struggle and woe is me, you could turn around and say, okay, God, man, I, I, I didn't build that. Let me get back to building on the foundation of what you really want me to. Let, let me start building these pillars he's been preaching about because our foundation is a rock of obedience to the word of God. So if you disobeyed from here back, you can obey from here forward. You can build again. 
That would be wisdom, because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 9 and 1, and I've read it at every, every juncture, wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. Sometimes we have to get back to building. Pillars are structural components that are imperative to the framework of that building, that the integrity of who and what we really are. They're, pillars aren't for aesthetics. If you go out in the front, we've got decorative pillars out there. We put the decoration around. There's really a pillar there, and it's for support. Are you hearing me? We, it, we, don't, we don't build these pillars for looks. We may decorate them. We don't put pillars to make them livable. We understand that pillars are an integral component that anchors our lives into that rock of obedience. They're, the pillars, they're not luxuries. They're necessities. I got to have these things. These things that I'm preaching about and teaching about, they're not something, well, no. You ain't going to make it without these. Your house is going to fall. In fact, just because you can come in here with a nice dress and a nice suit and sit here faithfully week after week doesn't mean you're building right. Because we don't know till the end if you did. It's not like a paint color or trend design. Pillars are necessities. And so tonight, I'm speaking about the next pillar. Yours and my life will stand for the long haul in the face of any storm that comes. For that to happen, we're going to have to have an unshakable faith, an unshakable pillar of faith. After all, we are the people of faith. That's what separates us from everybody else. The very currency of our relationship with God is built from the coin of faith. Hebrews tells us in 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Stop. You, 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 better, you better make sure the, the pillar of faith is there. Okay? You, you, uh, I can't even begin to please God without this pillar. I, I can't omit this pillar. It's impossible for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is rewarded that sometimes seek him. Well, I, I, I know I get it because the Bible tells us, and it tells us about, in, in Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the assembling of yourself together. They go, as the manner, as the manner, as the manner, there are just some people, their manner is, they're not going to be faithful. They can't please God. And, and they'll stop. Let me explain to you. I don't care how great the excuse is. If it's your manner and it's perpetual, you're the problem, not the church. The enemy has succeeded in creating a manner about you that you don't need the pillar of faith in your life. You don't need to be here. Other things are more important. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? The Bible does not say that it is difficult or challenging to please God without faith. It says it is impossible. Did you hear what I said? It's subtle, but it's there. Will not please God with the absence of faith. We have to have faith. There, there are things, there, there are places, there are times that we have to move forward regardless of what we see because we believe in what we don't see. We believe in what we've heard. Listen, Romans. 12 and 3, for I say through the grace given to me, every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Don't get intoxicated with the things of this world. Don't be intoxicated with the mindset, well, I got my own way of serving God. No, you can't. Jesus was very clear. God's very clear in his word. This is how you serve me. You can't make up your own. The world will tell you you can make up your own way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You, you can't make up your own way. Your way is not his way, so you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Don't think too highly, more highly of yourself than you ought to think. He says it gently, but it's pretty brutal, actually. According as God dealt to every man the measure of faith. The wonderful thing about it is none of us are faithless. We have faith. Say, I have faith. I've been given a measure of faith. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to go take it and bury it? 
while you do everything else, and it sits there, this anemic little fade seed. You've done nothing. Remember the, remember the people that are given the talents? We've all been getting, what have you done with your faith? Well, we have a choice where we place it. We have a choice in where we do with our faith. In fact, the psalmist tells us some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I, 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 I can't tell you how many times when something bad happens and, and you get on these, get on the forums that we get out. Don't pray, that ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to go straight to God. I, I, I know it don't make sense to you, but it makes sense to God. And if he's, oh, I'm, I'm going to thank to God, I'm going there with it. Now, it's amazing how many of us put faith in other things, all of us. How, how many times, anybody here ever sitting in the airport or, or, or they boarded you on the plane and, and, and the, 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 the stewardess gets on there and thank you for flying with Southwest Airlines or American Airlines or United Airlines. We realize you have many choices in air travel. But the next time you decide it was ever God's plan for a couple of hundred people to put themselves inside a pressurized cylindrical metal tube and travel at 500 miles per hour, five miles above the surface of the planet, we are just the people who are glad to help you out. Think about it. I'm guilty of this. You go to a doctor whose name you can't pronounce. I got called back to, to the reform. I couldn't even remember the doctor's name just before church. They give you a prescription that you cannot read. You take it to a pharmacist you do not know. He gives you a medication you know nothing about, and you take it. Some of us got some pretty good faith. You don't think you got faith. You do. You're just putting it in other things. Because that, my friend, is living by faith. Now, I'm going to throw one out there just to be sticky. How many of you went out and just allowed them to tell you, we got a vaccine for you? Now, I don't have a dog in this fight. And now all this stuff is starting to come out. Pfizer gave out their information over the last couple of days, over 200,000 pages of documentation. And, oh, boy. Some of you got some amazing, oh man, I wish I had as much faith as some of y'all have. Are you hearing me? The fact is that none of us get through a single day without living by faith. When you walk in your house and flip the light on, you put faith in the electrical wiring of your home. When you turn the ignition switch on your car, you're trusting. You just, how many of you, you just know it's going to start up and go. Anybody have that feeling when you go like this and it goes click, click, click? The devastating feeling. That, that feeling is called missed place to faith. <laughs> How many of you, when you mail a letter, postal service is going to come through? Sometimes, of course, our faith might be misplaced because faith is only as valuable as the object of that faith. The same is true in spiritual faith. Buddhists have faith in Buddha. Muslims have faith and trust in Allah. Hindus believe in thousands, actually, of gods, various gods. Most religious people put faith in their ability to keep the tenets or rules to be good enough to satisfy their god and reach their nirvana or build up enough good karma. But it's sad when you're struggling and someone's karma drives over your dogma. Even when people claim no religion at all, they still live by faith. Everyone, every single person is putting faith in something. It may be in some notion of human potential. My dad's going to come through. My mom will be there. Maybe you put it in the supremacy of science or reason. Freud said, or well, political power. 
some of us have so much faith or so much involved in that. That's all you talk about. And then, of course, there are those people that are having faith of being one with the universe and with the planets aligned in their horoscopes and all that other stuff. But understand, everyone lives by faith. But Almighty God is the object of our faith. The thing that will make my house stand is my faith is centered in Jesus Christ alone. The disciples walked with Jesus one day. Jesus saw a fig tree, all the beautiful leaves and the foliage, but it had no figs, and Jesus cursed it. I've taught on this before, but I would be remiss if I left it out today. There are great lessons to be learned about the importance of fruit in our lives. Don't overlook it. Don't downplay it. In order to please God, you got to have faith because faith brings fruit. No faith, no fruit. He cursed a fruitless tree. Listen. The next day as they passed by, Peter noticed that the fig tree was withered and dried up. It was dead by the word of God. He was shocked, which is rather amazing because he'd already seen the dead raised, the blind healed, and the leper cleansed. In fact, he'd already walked on water with Jesus. But this comparatively simple act of the fig tree dying amazed him. I don't know, I'd still be stuck on the water part. It's pretty cool, man. You know, I'd be saying it's the shoes and starting me a shoe program and, and get, get a new pair of shoes. If you have these kind of shoes, you can do it. Whatever. I don't know. I, I might have been still stuck at people being raised from the dead, but nevertheless, it's this that amazed him. Getting some deep things personal things of living and walking with God, he, he points out to Jesus that his word has come true. And it's kind of as though maybe he thought Jesus was going to go, what? No way, it died? Let me go look. Are you hearing me? But what's interesting is Jesus gives us an insight into some understanding in Mark 11, 22, he said, his only response was, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Jesus was not only given Peter, but the rest of us a very simple clue and the important answer to life's tough, hard, difficult questions. When Things don't make sense. Trust God and have faith in him. Mm -hmm. I know a guy. I know a guy that built a boat for a great rainstorm that had never happened before. I know a guy. Right? Never rained, but he built an ark, right? Jesus comes walk on the shoreline. He's talking to fishermen, professional fishermen. They fished all night. I don't know how big the boat was, but I've learned long enough that you can cast all day here and cast there. And the same fish swimming there are the same ones that go by their back. I don't know how far apart the, the boat was or you know how wide it was. They toiled all night. And he said, you know what, guys? Cast your net on the other side. And they even extract. Man, we toiled all night, but nevertheless... At thy word. I don't see it. I don't need to see it. I heard it. I heard the word. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna limp now. I'm not gonna stumble now. I, I it, at thy word. You know what? Having faith in an empty boat, uh, having faith uh, when a fig tree is dried up, having faith uh, building an ark that's never had a flood before. I'm telling you. I want to have faith in God. I want to build that pillar of faith uh, where I walk my faith. Cast your net on the other side. And they caught more than they could. I wonder how many of us 
are a step of faith away from more than ever before. I think it would solve a lot of our problems if we would simply get back to the simplicity of, I don't have all the answers, but I have faith in God. Even if I don't know what's going on, I'm going to have faith in God. Even if the checking account is, I'm going to have faith in God. Even if the doctors are saying this, I'm going to have faith in God. Even if all my friends are thinking or saying that, I'm going to have faith in God. Even if it seems like hell is mocking me, I want to have faith in God. I can't imagine for 120 years Noah being ridiculed. Do you really think it bothered him the second that big old alligator-sized raindrop hit the top of his bald head? And he, <laughs> he, I don't know if he danced or did a jig or came to the front like what Sister Crystal does. I don't know what he did, but I'd get a really excited. You know, y'all thought I was a fool, but I'm going to be the one that laughs last. Hallelujah. There ought to be some. My faith is in the one who created all that. Is. My faith is in the first and the last. My faith is in the Alpha and the Omega. My faith is in the one who holds all power in heaven and earth. My faith is in the one who's never failed. My faith is one who can never fail. I'm thankful. That that measure of faith has grown and I can now say my faith is not based on what I see. My faith is not based on what I feel. My faith is not based on what I can observe with my senses. I can't tell you how many times I've had to get in prayer and ignore all that to please God. I show up anyway, go up anyway, speak it anyway. Pray anyway. Keep going because I'm going to have faith in God. Where are my elders tonight? Hey, young people, maybe you need to be my elders. Hey, young people, you believe in God? Let's worship Him. Let's praise Him. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain. Okay, maybe we just need some young people around here. Maybe you need to go ahead and open the door and you're an elder by how you walk, by faith. Are you walking and leading by faith? Is what you're saying, what you're speaking, what you're doing. It's about time some of us look ridiculous to the world that we can honestly declare we're walking by faith. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. By faith, Noah being warned of God. How many knows what the word tells us about the last days? You've been warned. You've been warned of things not yet seen. Yeah, we haven't seen in coming glory, but we've seen everything that precedes that. Yet he moved with fear. Wait a minute. Who moved? No. Some of us sit back. You're moved, God. I don't know how many times I've got down. God, I need you to. It ain't my move, pal. I've done everything. Where's your faith? Get up, move your backslid carcass. Go grab that faith that you buried and get out and start walking by faith again. Get that pillar built back in your house. You got faith in your money. You got faith in this. You got faith in who you think you are and your titles and all. No, 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 no. Faith in God. His faith caused him to move. And in him moving, he saved his own house. Oh, hallelujah. Don't worry so much about your babies and your children and your family as you do about making sure you have an unshakable pillar. In your life, undeniable pillar. They don't need to, to see all the stuff you're going to hand them. They need to see the life that you have for God and the faith that you walk in. Hey, parents, you need to listen to me. Walk by faith. When trouble hits, believe God. When problems come, believe God. When issues flare up, believe God. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. Matthew 24 declares, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving to marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. 
so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Hey, elders. Hey, old folks. Hey, ministers. Everything about you should be pointing to preparedness. You ought to walk in here with the spirit. I'm going to worship because I know it's soon. I can't run around all day doing all this stuff and come and sit in here. This is the most important place I can be right now. Everything I say, everything I do should be pointing like Noah's life did to his family. Hey, get ready. It's coming. Our life should say, hey, get ready. Jesus is coming. Our young people should not waffle because they don't see an elder in here. No, they should be established and be, 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 be built up their faith because they watch you put importance into the house of God. I can't afford to miss. I can't afford to be late. I can't afford to be slack in that. I can't, I can't be lazy. Wait, I better get more fervent even the more as I see the day approaching. Living by faith. Unaffected. Worried or dismayed by what's going on in the world because you're looking for his coming. Let me help you. He, he, the world ain't, the world, he's not saving the world, he's saving souls. If you're looking for his coming, you'll be ready when he gets here. We walk by faith, not by sight. Just because I can't see doesn't mean it's not real. Noah never saw that rain. He's never seen the catching away of the saints, but it's coming in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Mm -hmm. As improbable as the rain and flood was in Noah's day, it seems so improbable that Jesus is coming. A.W. Tozer made an interesting observation about this principle. He said, faith is seeing the invisible, but the, not the non-existent. Some people think faith is believing in something that's not actually there. Real biblical faith, the kind that keeps us in storms, believes God when he tells us there is a reality even when we cannot see it yet. He's doing something. He's at work like his word declares. Faith is in God's word and his promises. Even if you're facing a siege, even if you're facing an army and starvation, Second Kings tells us, then Elisha said, hear ye the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then said a Lord on, on who's the king, that king lean answered the man of God and said, behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be. Let me tell you, it's a dangerous place to ascend to a place of authority and leadership and open your mouth in doubt. Can you imagine the amount of faith and people that you hurt and you become the millstone that causes people to get, because you don't have faith like that. You're right there. You're an important person. You're, you're right there. You're, 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 you're right there. Well. Lord, we make windows of heaven. He said, Behold, thou shalt see it with an eye, but thou shalt not eat thereof. If I was to ask you in that story, which character would you be? Which character would you be? Faith means that we keep our focus on God who controls circumstances and not on the circumstances themselves. Listen, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm telling you it's what pleases God. Listen, if, if, if it was easy, everybody could do it. The whole point of having the struggle is so then it will be faith. If there's no struggle, then it isn't faith. Oh, it, it, it's easy to jump up and down and say, I believe God when everything's paid for and everything's good and you got tomorrow and the next and that. That's why God needs some of us to go through that place. Wait a minute. Until I was afflicted, I went astray. It's not about what I can see. It's about what God has said. In Daniel 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. We know the story. See, some of us want to walk silently and humbly before law. No, we don't want to say anything, but you have to understand, the, one of the biggest problems in the evil day is those people allowing evil to go and they're standing silent. 
and they stand silent not 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 because they're necessarily have nothing to say they stand silent because they have no faith God wants us we're going to be put on the spot in these last days that's the whole point that's the whole point a, 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 a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Nobody lights a candle. Put that. Wait a minute. If if you get on fire for God, you better believe He wants you in the game. If you'll walk by faith, He wants to set you in up front. It's always be better to ask to be come up than to sit down. The Bible says. Oh, there ought to be something about us that we're walking and talking and living a faith where we're jumping up and down. Everybody likes it. Put me in, coach. Well, all those other Israelites were bowing. Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused. Oh, where, where, where are those folks today? Where are elders like that today? They could see the danger of not conforming. They knew the fiery furnace. They, they knew about the lion's den. But there was something about these captives. They could see the punishment, but they could still hear the promises of their childhood teaching. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And thou shalt have no other gods before me. And thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. I, I, I wonder if there's anybody here today that still has that kind of faith. I'm going to believe in God. I'm going to believe in God. I, I still remember my teacher. I remember my teacher no matter the storm that's raging, no matter the health issues, the, the financial storm, no matter what's going on, I, I'm going to remember that and I'm going to walk by faith. My faith comes by what I've heard. Romans tells us in chapter 10, verse 70, so when faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, that's why it matters who you're listening to. I don't care what you listen to as far as music and all that, but it, I'm going to get on to you. If you can't walk in faith, turn it off. If you can't get on fire for God, there's something you're listening to that's quenching it, that's destroying it. Turn it off. Throw it out. Get rid of it until you get on fire. Until you get back on fire. If you can't walk in faith, you're a fool if you don't get it out of there. Some of you fight harder for your worldliness than you do for faithfulness. Some of you bow right up when pastor preaches about certain things. I don't care. I'm not coming to your house. I'm not going to police it. I don't need to. It's evident in here. I watch what offends you. I watch what bothers you. I watch what irritates you. But let me tell you something. God's watching and he's displeased without faith. In all honesty, if Jesus was coming tonight, there wouldn't be one of us sitting in our seats right now. It matters what you listen to. It matters what you... It even matters who you're married to. You, Oh, young people hear me. If God tarries, you better make sure you got a hold of someone that's going to live for God. If you feed your soul with fear, you'll be afraid. If you feed your soul with negativity, you'll be negative. If you feed your soul with doubt, you'll doubt. If you feed your soul with worldliness, you'll be worldly. Let me tell you something. You ought to be quoting scripture, yeah. not colloquialisms. If you got a bunch of old sayings all the time, they're not biblical. You're listening to the wrong jump. There ought to be something about you. If Jesus, when tempted by the devil, will turn away and say it's written, who would it be like? You better learn to say it is written. It is written. It is written. Because if you'll let the voice of God flow into your soul, Faith will be the product. And so when tough times come and the enemy would like to knock us down, that pillar of faith is something we cling to and the enemy can't knock our house down. We've all seen those clips. We've watched them on YouTube. Those newscasters trying to broadcast out there when there's a, a, a hurricane coming. I, 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 I've seen a couple of them where one was sitting there and something flew by and knocked him in the head and another was trying to hold on to that. 
They're reaching for something that's solid. They're reaching for something that's anchored, and there's a storm coming. It's raging right now. You need to make sure you got a hold of something solid that's not going to move. That's going to survive the hurricane of worldliness and carnality and godlessness. Tonight, I point you to the importance of building a pillar of unshakable faith in your life. Paul makes a statement. It's kind of obscure until you break it down in, in 2 Corinthians 1 and 24. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but our helpers of your joy, for by faith you stand. And Paul was saying, I can't, I can't control your faith. I am here to help, but you stand by your faith. Ah, oh, you know, and, uh, you ask, I, I've had people come to me, I've heard it, we've all been, why can't they just get it? Why can't the new people just get it, and why can't the old people get it back? Hold on a minute, what, y'all think I walk around this high on the spirit all the time? Uh, uh, I got to get down in prayer and wrestle this old carcass and get it back every day. You're supposed, that's what it's about. I die daily to probably something you quit dying. You're holding on to the wrong thing. You must build and add to your faith. Add to your faith. Add, let me say, add to your faith. Jude 1 and 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You ain't building if you ain't praying in the Holy Ghost. When's the last time you've done that? Your face is going to be tested. My face is going to be tested. Everybody's face is going to be tested. But my Bible makes me, your face tested right now. Will you get yourself submitted enough to put in all the ghosts to get this pillar built back in your life? That ain't, don't blame God. Don't blame who you are. Don't blame your character. Behold, all things become new. Yield yourself. Let God come in and make you new. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Nothing strange happening. You're not being picked on. You haven't been abused by God. But it's not fair. If you knew what I went through, you ain't been through nothing like me. You're right, it's not fair. God doesn't even strive to be fair. That's a human concept. We brought that into the mix. Think about it. If God was fair, we'd all have to go through what Job went through. Now how bad do you got it? If God was fair, we'd all have to be like the three Hebrews and face a fiery furnace. If God was fair, can you hear the lions roaring, Daniel? And how, how many of y'all done that? Fair. See, some of you, you me too, we get this idea mixed up that God's got to be fair. Where did what? Look, I, I don't hurt your feelings, but I don't want to go through what you've been through. So give me mine. You you deal with what you need. Let me deal with what I need. Are, are you hearing what? You know what, Jacob, Aaron, you guys may grow up in the same house, look a lot alike, have the same mom, and the same dad, and all that wonderful stuff, but you're going to go through different things. All, all, all you that are so caught up in immature, that ain't fair. Who told you it was going to be fair? How many want God's favor? So if somebody else doesn't get favor, you can't have it because that wouldn't be fair. How many know we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling? How many know that we all have to have our own pillar of unshakable faith in our lives? God is working all things out for our good. Say he's working it out for my good. Don't cry about it. Just thank God you ain't going through what somebody else is going through. God is shaping us into his image and we have different things that gotta be taken out of our lives. God is doing what he has to do to get us to heaven. If I need something different with you than you do, God, don't be put me through what the test. Give me what I need to make it. First Peter, but rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you're here tonight, 
and it doesn't really matter where you're at. Really. The, if the devil thought he had you, you see, devil, you thought you had me. You thought I'd quit, but I'm here tonight. You thought I couldn't take it, but I'm here tonight, and I'm hearing what I need to hear. You know what? You've been able to tear down that pillar. You've been able to, I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to it. You you, you, th you see, I, I'm not standing my, I got a pillar of faith built in my life. I'm not just standing in my power. My faith is in Jesus Christ, and I'm clinging to the faith that the devil, you can't shake it. I, I'm anchored in Jesus. Listen, listen, Job, Job. Teaches in the midst of a tragic loss and pain, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. No matter what happens, no matter what goes on in life, no matter what God allows, no matter how God answers, no matter if I like it or not, no, ma no matter if I stand alone or with a crowd, I'm still persuaded of this one thing. Though he slay me, I will trust him. I may not enjoy the process, but I love the product. Uh, we went to a, a car museum yesterday, a couple of us. Those cars couldn't be there if someone didn't care about them. His cars couldn't be there if, if someone wasn't concerned, and there they are on display. A testimony to craftsmanship, care, and concern by the owner. And if a human being can have that kind of care for an automobile, how much does God care about you? Now, some of those are original to, to, to the last nut and bolt, and some have been modified. Some have had paint changed on them. Some have had people do different things. But they're there, and they're safe, they're protected, they're in an air-conditioned building. They, 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 I guess they've made it to automobile heaven, Brother Davenport. We ought to understand, I don't know how we get there, but we got to get there. And if anybody knows how to get it's our God. It's, uh, I'm going to have faith in God. I'm gonna, he, know, I, I, he may have to give me a, a ridiculous LS swap or like that Mercury that had that Chevy motor, which is a, you know, I don't know, you don't do that. But somebody did, but thank God it's there. I don't know what God's got to do to you. I don't know what he's got to allow happen in your life. If you'll have faith in God, the only thing is making it to heaven. Oh, what does Peter say? That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found in the praise and honor and glory. I'm going through it to give glory to God. Not me. It's not about me in the right now. It's about giving glory. I have faith in God. You see, the real precious metal, the real precious in the finances, the money, and the gold of this world, it's that trying of your faith and have an unshakable faith in Almighty God. Oh, I made it. I survived. I stayed with it when other people were being crushed and thrown and letting the things of this life destroy them. We built on Jesus and we stood. We stood the storms. We stood the test. Oh, all that other stuff is fool's gold. But we got that real gold that God is looking for, the faith of the saints. Let me tell you what unshakable faith does as I need to bring this too close. It worships. It worships. No matter sickness, no matter struggle, no matter pain. I don't even know how I'm up here tonight with my back and my neck and what's there. But you know what? I, I, I'll quit when I'm dead. I've given so much time, energy, and effort to the world. I want to keep fighting till I can't fight. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. I know we don't like to say it. But you mean by, right next to someone <laughs> who might not want you to worship like Abel because they're not willing to bring the right sacrifice, but there ought to be something. I want to give to God what I can. <laughs> Ah, uh, we, we may be married, we may be together, you may be children, all right, but it don't matter. I got to stand before God on my own. 
You better get this in. You better get an email on this today. You better worship God. How you Don't base it on the person next to you. Don't base it on someone from the history. Uh, 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 Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. He wasn't about to be pers persuaded or influenced by Cain. He obtained a witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaking. When you go, what is your life going to say? Faith allowed Abel to give and to give the right thing. Faith allowed him to worship God with the first fruits of it. <coughs> he didn't let anything stop him. Can you imagine that? Faith allowed him to tithe. Do you know that when I write my tithe check, when you write your tithe check, you're demonstrating faith. What I'm saying is I trust God more than what I see going on in this world. And like Abel, it shows that faith will stand. <coughs> and faith that stands will worship. I'm going to worship with everything, not just my body, not with just my mind and my hands, but my time my resources uh, oh faith that stands will worship i will work not not just bare minimum i'm gonna worship and still blow the mind of god that while everything says to save at the store and that, uh, i want to worship faith walks by faith enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch was a guy who walked with God and was not. Faith will demonstrate itself in a walk with God. Oh, that, that's, that, you know, that I, I don't like funerals, but there's nothing like a funeral when unequivocally you can say, you know what? They were all in with God. There were no distractions. There were no sideshows. There was no this. No, there was nothing to care. They could get up and boldly just talk about their faith in God. By what they said, by what they watched, by what they listened to, by everything. They were just permeated by faith. It's hard to say we believe in prayer if we don't pray. It's hard to say we trust his word if we don't read it. Faith is truly demonstrated by walking with God because we walk by faith, not by sight. <laughs> You'll know faith because faith works. By faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not as yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Noah's face demonstrated clearly itself in his willingness to do what God sent him to do. You know, Noah, if you want your family to be saved, get busy with what God told you to do. No one's going to build that thing for you. No one's going to pick up the slack. You have a responsibility. Faith compelled him to pick up a hammer, to pick up a saw. Every board that he cut, every time he swung that hammer, every day he worked, it was a testimony of his faith in God. When his family rose on the waters that came and floated above the destruction, that was a result of the faith that was willing to be put in action. You want to see faith? Come over here on a Saturday. You want to see faith? Show up early for prayer. You want to see faith? Be here at 8.30 on a Sunday morning. You want to see faith? Come by here on a Tuesday night. You'll find a whole bunch of Noahs running around building a church. You'll see them here every day of the week. You know, it's no one else's responsibility to keep me close to God. It's no one else's responsibility to ensure my family is secure. 
It's no one else's job to make my home a sacred and righteous place. My faith has to be busy. My faith has to be at work. I'm saved by my faith, but I also have to work out my own salvation. Both of those are verses in the Bible. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have worked. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Faith is patient. Faith waits. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for inheritance, obeyed. He went out. Not knowing whither he went. When's the last time God sent you on there and you didn't fully know the ending of it? By faith he sojourned in a land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him for the same promise. For he looked for a city which foundations whose builder and maker is God. He was given a promise of a land that would be as his. He didn't get it the next day. He didn't get it the next week. He didn't get it the next month, month or even Brother Joe, he didn't get it the next year. It was hundreds of years later before Joshua led his descendants into that place to stay that Abraham demonstrated faith in the waiting, the working, and the worshiping. In my carnal nature, in my natural mind, my flesh, I would love every answer to prayer to come as soon as it's prayed. I wish I never had to wait for things to work out. See, some think that if we have faith, God will always move right now. That somehow faith is the ability to force God's hand. I can tell you that if we had everybody fasting and praying, we won't overwhelm God by the numbers of praying or the volume of time involved. Faith does not twist God's arm. Faith trusts God's plan. Faith places us right in the right condition to receive the results of that plan. So as we all stand, faith is a pillar you can run to again and again. And you're going to have to. you got... Sister Carol, you got stuff going on. I got stuff going on. I need that pillar. You, you got kids coming up in this world. You need that pillar. You, 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 you are, yeah, heaven's door. You need the pillar of faith. You ain't no one here can say, ah, I'm good today. No. Storms are coming. For some of you, they come this year, this month. This week, maybe today. What do you do? I'll tell you. Worship. Walk. Work. Wait. All in faith. Go back to that pillar of faith. Let the devil know. You're going to stand. Paul said, I now behold, I go bound in the spirit in Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save that the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And, and, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul said, I'm headed to Jerusalem. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. All I know, brother, is that in every city that I travel through, the Holy Ghost is speaking and telling me of bonds and afflictions. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy. i got an unshakable pillar of faith. I'm going to make it because I'm not going to let these things move me. That pillar stands and it stands tall and it stands strong.
There was a pastor who after the usual Sunday morning worship stood and walked over to the pulpit. But before he started his text and gave his sermon title, he introduced a visiting minister who was in the service that day. In the introduction, the pastor told the congregation that the guest minister was one of his dearest childhood friends. And he wanted him to have a few moments to greet the church and share whatever he felt would be appropriate for the service. With that, an elderly man made his way and stepped to the pulpit and began to speak. He said, a father and his son and a friend of his son were sailing off the Pacific coast. He began to tell of a fast approaching storm that suddenly came in and blocked any attempt they would have to get back to shore. The waves began to get so high that even the father, even in all his experience as a sailor, couldn't keep the boat upright. And soon the three were swept into the ocean as the boat capsized. The old man hesitated for a moment, looking at the two boys thrashing in the water. He made eye contact with the two teenagers who were there. And then as the old man spoke, two teenage boys in the audience caught his eye and he looked at them. At that point, those two teenagers hadn't been too interested in the old minister's story. But now they looked at him intently. They became interested in what he was saying. The old man went back to a story and said, the father grabbed a rescue line and looked and had to make the most excruciating decision of his life. To which boy does he throw the lifeline to? He only had seconds to make the decision. This father knew that his son was a Christian. He'd been born again and he knew that his friend was not. The agony of his decision could not be matched by the torrent of the waves. And as the father yelled out, I love you, son, he threw the rope to his friend. By the time the father had pulled his son's friend to the capsized boat, he looked and his son had already disappeared beneath the raging swells into the black of the water. His son's body was never recovered. By this time, those two teenage boys sitting in the front pew anxiously waited for the next words to come out of the old minister's mouth. The father, he continued, knew his son would step into eternity with Jesus and could not bear the thought of his son's friend stepping in eternity without Jesus. Therefore, he made the choice which sacrificed his son to save his son's friend. With that, the old man turned and made his way back to his chair. A silence filled the church. The pastor walked to the pulpit, delivered his brief sermon, and closed the service. Within minutes of the service closing, the two teenagers were at the old minister's side. You know, that's a pretty interesting story, the boys politely said, but but we don't think it was realistic for the father to give up his son's life in hopes that the other boy would become a Christian. Well, you got a point there, the old man replied, glancing down at a worn-out old Bible. A big smile broadened his face, and he once again looked at the boys and said, it sure isn't realistic, is it? But I'm standing here to tell you that the story gives me a glimpse of what it must be like for God to give up his only son for me. 
You see, I was that father, and your pastor was my son's best friend. <laughs> just like those three Hebrews, and just like Daniel. It's going to take that kind of faith, that unshakable faith, the kind that converts those around us, the kind that converts nations, the kind of faith that causes kings to turn. You're God's God. Oh, I wonder today as you stand here that maybe it's that kind of faith that Jesus talked about, that centurion that said, you don't need to come to my, just say the word. 